Every day, there are more and more studies that show that getting to sleep consistently can make you more productive, build more muscle, and even make you more attractive. But the real question is, is there a perfect science-backed sleep routine? To find out, I'm going to try Andrew Huberman's full sleep protocol, along with some few minor improvements that I've been testing. So if you don't know who Andrew Huberman is, I'm Andrew Huberman. He's a neuroscientist professor at Stanford, and he has a podcast where he breaks down the science-backed ways to improve your daily life. He basically formulated this insane sleep protocol that has gone viral all over social media. And so for the next 30 days, I'm going to follow this protocol exactly while tracking my mood, sleep, and weight to see if it really makes a difference. Will I be able to quantifiably feel better and more productive on a day-to-day -day basis? Will having better sleep make me more attractive? Will it improve my performance in the gym? Let's find out. The first part of the routine is to wake up at the same time every single day. And once you wake up, you want to go for a daily walk, which not only gets your body moving immediately. Going for a morning walk. I'm also experimenting with not having any caffeine. I know Huberman, he drinks caffeine. It also gets sunlight in your eyes, which is what regulates your circadian rhythm. The next thing that he talks about is to delay your caffeine intake by 90 minutes. And obviously this depends on whether or not you drink caffeine or how much coffee you drink. For this experiment, I'm just going to actually switch from coffee to matcha, which has way less caffeine. It still does have some caffeine in it, so I'm still careful to not drink it past 2 p.m. The next part, I was a little bit more hesitant to try for the next 30 days, and that's Huberman's sleep stack. I always say behavioral tools first, then look to nutrition, then if necessary, look to supplementation, and then if still necessary, look to prescription drugs, obviously prescribed by a board certified physician. So Huberman basically has a list of supplements that he takes every night before he goes to bed. And they've been scientifically proven to improve your quality of sleep and help you get better and deeper sleep. He recommends taking this along with L-theanine. So takes a few other ones like apigenin, but I'm just gonna have chamomile tea, which I think naturally contains some apigenin. But I still think with these, it's still optimal to cycle them occasionally because I can imagine that if I took them every single day, the effects of it or the strength of it would wear off. I bought these a while back, but I never used them super consistently. So I'm really curious to see my results after 30 days of using them. One of the things that Andrew Huberman talks about that is really important to avoid if you're trying to optimize your sleep is alcohol. There's pretty much no way around having alcohol disrupt your sleep unless you drink it like super early in the morning. And as a 26 year old, I don't really have a super hard rule about never drinking any alcohol. I do drink it on special occasions, even though I optimize my health quite a bit. And so here's what happened. I woke up pretty tired and my sleep score is really bad. Maybe it was because I hadn't drink in a really long time but the whole day the next day afterwards I could feel such a big difference in just my cognitive ability and I mean it's probably just because I got really bad sleep if you use a sleep tracker and you drink alcohol it'll definitely make you think twice before doing it again because you can very clearly see how it disrupts your REM sleep and gives you a really bad score but maybe it depends on the alcohol itself also your tolerance to it I've always had Asian glow which which I've read that it means that my body isn't able to actually digest alcohol like somebody else for me there was a huge negative impact when I just drank a little bit of alcohol. The next part of his protocol is temperature regulation. Andrew Huberman talks about it in many different ways, but from what I understand, there are basically three things that you want to make sure to keep cool every night, which are your room, your body, and also your mattress. So for my room, I kept it around 72 to 74 degrees every single night, and uh, that's pretty cold for me. And as for your actual body temperature, it helps to take a warm or hot shower at night because it helps dissipate the heat. So for the mattress, it depends if you have access to this, but I have a temperature control mattress, it's called Eight Sleep. It's a, it's a mattress hopper and basically just keeps the bed cool for the whole night and also has the added benefit of being a sleep tracker. It's pricey, but I would say that if you actually want to invest in your sleep, it's definitely worth it. And I also asked the company for a discount code, which can use, which is Reisu at checkout, if you want to help support the channel. The next part of the protocol is light regulation. So with the daily walks in the morning, you're already getting the sunlight to regulate your circadian rhythm. But it's also important to avoid blue light at night, which comes from your computer and your phone, because it signals to your brain that it's still not time to go to bed. And so for this, I use an app on my computer called Flux, which makes the screen like completely orange almost, and it removes all the blue light. I also have these like blue light blocking glasses if I'm using my phone or watching television. I had to make a few modifications to my room in order to make it completely black out so that in the morning the light doesn't come in and also I had, I had like various devices in my bedroom where they were just shiny LED lights so I bought this like black tape to cover it up and actually I feel like it makes a difference it's like one of those 1% improvements that you can make to your sleeping environment and the last part of Andrew Huberman's sleep protocol is what he calls non-sleep deep rest it's basically a guided meditation that is supposed to help calm your nervous system and help you get to sleep if you're having trouble falling asleep sometimes it also works as a substitute if you didn't have enough sleep in the day there's a 
a video on YouTube that he narrates himself if you want him to do like a guided meditation. It kind of feels like hypnosis. Personally, I didn't feel a super big difference from doing this. Maybe I had to do it for a longer period of time. And it was also hard to keep this one habit every single day because I was already listening to his podcast. But I do think that meditating in general can help you have better sleep, at least in my experience. So I'm almost done with the whole 30 day challenge and just wanted to share like some of my insights so far and what I've noticed in my trends. Doing all the habits is becoming more second nature now. I just do all of them almost subconsciously, like putting on these, these glasses. I just have them at my desk at a certain time and then I also have the lights automated to turn red at a certain time. And I've noticed that overall, when I take magnesium, I have an increase in REM sleep. So I find that it's generally better for me to exercise in the morning in relation to my sleep. Sometimes I have a better workout when I work out at night. So it's kind of like a trade-off. The other thing is also my last meal. It's generally better for me to eat more carbs towards dinner, but then I cannot also eat dinner close to my bedtime because if I eat carbs close to bedtime for dinner, I'm gonna have a glucose spike and then that's gonna negatively impact my sleep. All right, so now it's been 30 days since I followed the Andrew Huberman Sleep Protocol. And since then I've been tracking my mood my progress in the gym, and also all my sleep metrics. Overall, I saw an increase in my REM sleep and deep sleep when I took the supplements, especially taking the L-theanine and magnesium together. It definitely gave me some super vivid dreams. Sometimes it would make me sleep in because I didn't want to get out of bed since the dream was like so interesting. So maybe it backfired a little bit. But the times that I got the best scores was when I also had good timing. Everything else was increased, like taking these things that increased my sleep efficiency. It was pretty high. Look, it's like 90s, 92. It went from like 80s to like 90s so yeah definitely my sleep efficiency improved but the hardest thing for me was still getting that consistency in terms of waking up and going to bed at the same time so i have the day for when i actually did drink some alcohol and you can see like everything was good i still because i still had the chamomile tea magnesium l-theanine before i went to bed but everything was good except that my REM sleep was significantly hurt from this and it affected my heart rate it's higher than normal like usually my heart rate doesn't go that high and you can see my hrv too this is like lower than normal so it definitely had an impact here even in the morning there was it was like an hour that I was in bed and technically not asleep. That's how much the alcohol affected. But I didn't expect the results that I would get from my mood. So I use a different app to track my mood. It's called How We Feel. And it's actually developed by a nonprofit organization. And they also had help from Yale University as well for their research. It automatically pulls your data to see like how much you exercised, how much you slept. You can also put other information like where you are, who you're with. And then it gives you analytics here. So yellow and green are positive moods and then blue and red are negative moods. You can see that when I slept 10 plus hours, I actually felt pretty negative. And when I slept like five to six hours, I also felt negative 14% of the time. When I sleep in, I usually tend to feel more tired. And if I undersleep, obviously I would feel tired. And so from this, I can see that my optimal time, like amount of time that I should be sleeping or aiming for is probably around like seven hours. On average, I felt better when I had six to seven hours of sleep and worse when I had more than eight to 10 hours of sleep. So uh, usually I track my macros. Pretty much had the same diet for this entire month as I did the month before. And I dropped like four pounds, even though it's eating pretty much the same amount of calories and protein every day. Maybe it could be explained by going for more walks throughout the day. And according to my Apple Watch, I was also burning a similar amount of calories. So I roughly ate around 2000 calories a day, but my weight still dropped by about like one pound a week. And I definitely feel like my body composition when I look in the mirror has improved by a lot. I usually do about 120 minutes of cardio a week. And whenever I had better sleep, I had more willpower to finish that session. But sometimes when I didn't get as good at sleep, it would be harder to actually push through and finish that. After 30 days, I definitely think that his sleep protocol is a very solid base to start from if you don't have a sleep routine or evening routine. And through trying this, I found out what worked for me and what doesn't work for me. I've also made a few different improvements to it. So I've set up some systems to automate like my lights turning red at night. So it automatically removes all the blue light it just makes adhering to the protocol a lot easier i think realistically it's a little bit hard to follow on a daily basis but it's very worthwhile to try it out for yourself so you know like if you do want to have good sleep these are the key principles that you have to do for the day if you want to see me do a more complete biohacking routine you might want to check out this video where i tried and broke down a hundred million dollar ceo's biohacking routine i'll see you over there